Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and this is a special request RPG Maker MB tutorial for Rutibex. And he says, hey Driftwood, I have a question for you. How would you make a passive skill so that, for example, you could use the Yanfly job point systems system to buy a skill that gives you immunity to cold or lets you use shields or something? I figure it could be done with Yanfly passive states, but I can't figure out a way to make someone gain a passive state just by learning a skill. So, Rutabex, let me show you how to do that. It's not really hard at all. So, make sure you have the right plugins installed. You're right, you will need uh, Yanfly's auto passive states. So, you'll put that right there. You will also need the core engine, of course. All of, most of his plugins, Yanfly's plugins, will rely on that as a, as a source of uh, variables that uh, defines many things. So, once you've got your plugins uh, installed, I'll put a link in the description below where you can get those. You're going to do a few things. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a state. And uh, the state that you're going to make is uh, the state that... Uh, anything you can do in a state, you can make it a skill that you can turn into a passive. So that includes equipping stuff. So for cold immunity, it's really easy. Uh, one thing you can't do is use removal conditions. I'm sure there's a way that you can get around this, but the way that I figured it out, like I said, MB has many ways to do things, and the way I teach you guys stuff is not the finite only way to do things. This is just one method, and I do lots of workarounds to figure out things for you guys. So for this workaround and how I do it, you select no removal conditions. So you cannot remove the skill once it's... Uh, you can't get rid of the state once it's been added. So that's the the thing about this. Once you add this passive state, uh, unless you do it through an event, you won't ever be able to remove this state. Um, I'm kind of worried about if this will work with if we do a recover all, so we might have to check that out. But um, here's how you'll do it. You'll go um, add a new state, and then for, uh, for cold immunity, you'll do element rate, and then you'll just go to ice, and then set that to zero, so you take zero damage from ice. And uh, priority doesn't matter, just make sure it's not 100 and it's not 0. Um, for you shields, there's another exception here. You're going to go um, to equipped and add those. But if your classes or your actor has the trait that says uh, seal skill type, or no, seal, uh, seal armor type, seal equip type, yeah. So if you have that, like seal equip shield, then even if you unlock shield, they won't be able to use it. So you'll have to go through and delete any seal equipped uh, on all your classes um, and and actors for this to work. So um, then you just add the equips on the states. So that's the first thing we're doing. We'll take reference to the number. You probably won't want to add too many icons to like the uh, use sword, use dagger, uh, like passives because they'll stack up after a while if you start including a lot of passives. So, once we've got that, we're going to go over to Skills. And now we're going to add a skill that has the same thing. We're going to call it Cold Immunity and Equip Shields. For, um, on items, if you want to use uh, the item core, you can use, uh, do a code in the note tag called uh, that, that goes user.passives, capital S on states, dot push, and then the number of the state with an inline for items. But for, um, for skills, you want to go user.addState, this. Um, you won't be able to do any recover all events though. I think if you did a recover all event in the game, including like ends and stuff, you'll have to custom build your ends. Uh, I want to test that real quick. Then it'll probably erase it and then you might have already learned the skill so you don't know if you'll be able to relearn it. You could do an erase event but that doesn't make sense. So um, you would go uh, whatever learn cost you want since you specified job points. Then you're going to go uh, brackets, learn, cost, eval. You're going to go user dot add capital S on state. And then the number in parentheses is the state that's going to reflect it. So cold immunity is 91. So we're uh, adding the state 91. Um, we're also going to add a new skill type so that the players can't cast this, this ability. So you're going to go to skill types and add a new one called passives. So in this skill, you're going to put the skill type passives. Uh, in equip shields, you'll also put that in passive. So for the equip shields, it's the same thing. You're just adding state 92 instead of uh, state 91. So once you've done that, let's take a look at it in game.
So I talk to the dog, and that the dog gives me this Warlord's Keeper. It's a shield. And we can look at Driftwood, and he's unable to wear any shields. You see, it's, all he has is remove. He can't use any shields. But if we go to his skills, we have these two. Uh, oh, there's one more thing you have to do before we get into this. In order for that to appear right there, you'll have to go to the actors or the class and then type in a, a learn skill note tag. So he's a Ronin, so I put it right here, but you could also put it on the actors. You're going to type uh, brackets learn skill uh, with a colon, a space, and then you're going to put the number of the skill that we just created. For cold immunity, a skill 140. And then for the equip shields, it's 141. So that's why it appeared there. Uh, it won't automatically appear in there. So once you've done that, uh, let's go back to where we were. We go to skills, and we see that the note tags in uh, the job or the class is letting him learn these two skills with the cost of 5,000. And if we learn it, we have cold immunity, and if we equip shields, remember we couldn't equip that shield before, now we can. But I want to test one thing. I actually, I just thought of it when I was uh, making this tutorial. Um, so, what if we were to add, like, a recover all? So let's do another event right here. Yeah, this, this is fine. Just a little button or something. And then all it's going to do is do a recover all. Like it, like your typical in would do. I know that recover all gets rid of a positive states uh, as well. There might be a way around that. But I sort of want to test if this is going to make any difference. We talk to the dog. Go to our skills. We go cold immunity. Equip shields put our other shield on so we you see we have this icon for cold immunity if we recover all is it going to disappear yep it wipes it it wipes all the states away so now if we go to um, equip he can't use shields anymore and let's see if it erased the shield just uh, no it didn't erase the shield it just unequipped it because he can't use it anymore so that's the thing about this method. There's a, obviously a better way to do this, but this is one I just found out real quick that you can use. Uh, you'll just have to make your own custom uh, in, in event. So I could teach you how to do that if that's a problem. Instead of using a recover all, you'll just go like this. Change HP, entire party. Max that out. You could even use create a variable. Um, We'll go like this and make a custom in. Custom in HP. Custom in MP. And you probably don't want to restore TP. Uh, just the ends don't do that anyway. So we'll make those two. We'll set the custom in HP. Well, we have to control variables first. So we're going to set, you know, maximum. We're going to set it to a really, really super high number. Another control variable for the max NP. Set it to a lot. And you'll only really have to do that one time, and as long as you don't change it. So you could do this at the beginning of the game where you... Uh, declare all your variables like for me I'm declaring them all right here in this event when you first start the game so you would just add the, these two declare variables right there when you declare all your variables and you won't have to mess with it and anytime you reference those variables they'll still be that number and then we would go change HP for the entire party by a variable the custom in HP change MP for the entire party a variable the custom in MP and then you can play a sound effect just like the other end does you can even play the exact same uh, music effect or is it a sound effect 
No, it's a music effect, I think. So let's go, uh, yeah, in. You can even do the fade out if you want to. So you can go like, fade, oh, not back, no, sorry, fade out screen. Do that, make a little one second wait. Fade in screen. And then that shouldn't get rid of any states. So let's try it out. All right, so let's go to our skill. Let's learn our equip shields, our cold immunity. Now that we can wear that Warlord's Keeper again, we have cold immunity. Now we're not going to recover all, we're just going to change HP and MP. So we hit that. Similar to an in, but it didn't get rid of our passive states. So if we check our equip, we're still using the Warlord's Keeper. So, if you're going to uh, do your auto, if you're going to do your, your auto passive states like this, uh, just remove all instances of, of the recover all and uh, custom uh, build all your NPCs custom. Once you build it once, you can copy paste it to everywhere else. And uh, it's that simple. You can get around uh, pretty much everything with JavaScript. So uh, hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you. If it was, remember to like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you for being awesome, and we will see you in the next tutorial.